of the most important kinds of energy in the modern technological world is electrical energy. Electrical energy really sustains the modern world. Think about it. In our cities, electrical energy is vital to the functioning of our traffic systems and electrical energy from batteries starts our cars. Television, radio and the internet are essential to the complex communication systems that link the countries of the world. Electric currents turn motors and drive machinery. In fact, they drive almost all industrial applications. Electrical energy is usually the main power source used in our homes because electric currents lights up our homes, heats our food and provides the energy of labour-saving appliances such as vacuum cleaners and washing machines. In South Africa, more and more households are gaining access to electrical energy as the national grid is extended. Many South Africans would find life very difficult without electrical appliances, such as light bulbs, heaters, irons, stoves, refrigerators, hi-fis and even hair dryers. Such appliances represent only a few of the possible applications of electrical energy in everyday life. Hi there everybody, my name is Bruce and welcome to a new series of lessons on electrical currents. In these lessons, you will learn the terminology to describe electrical energy, as well as to be able to measure different electrical quantities such as voltage and current. By the end of this lesson, you should be able to define electric current. Let's start by gaining an understanding of electrical current by considering how electrical energy is transferred from the power station to your home. Electrical energy is a secondary energy source, which is converted from a primary energy source such as coal, natural gas, oil, nuclear power or other alternative sources. The most abundant source of energy in South Africa is coal. At the power station, coal is burnt to heat water, which becomes steam, and this steam is able to drive huge turbines. The turbine rotates a coil inside a magnetic field, and this movement of the coil generates an electric current. Electric current is carried across the country on huge overhead power lines or by underground cables to homes, towns, cities and farms. You can access electrical energy by simply plugging into the national grid, provided by Eskom. We will deal with the question of how we generate this electrical energy later on in these series of lessons. So don't get too worried if you did not understand the explanation the first time. For the purpose of this lesson, I want us to concentrate on this question. What exactly is an electric current? A very important fact you have to know about electric current is that electric current is a flow of charge. I'm going to repeat this again, so please make sure that you write this down. An electric current is a flow of charge. Let's explore this concept a little bit further. You should remember from your grade 8 and 9 studies on electrostatics that there are only two types of charges that exist, namely the positive charge and the negative charge. The reason why these charges exist can be explained by studying the structure of the atom. Electrical energy is also linked to the structure of the atom. And in order to understand how electrical energy works and where it comes from, we need to know a little bit about the basic structure of the atom. All matter is made up of atoms, and atoms are made up of smaller particles namely the proton, the neutron and the electron. Here I have something that you will easily recognize. It's a briquette which is simply a lump of carbon. Can you remember where we find carbon on the periodic table? You will find carbon towards the right hand side of the periodic table in group 4. Carbon was known to the ancient civilizations. Its symbol is C and its atomic number is 6. This refers to the number of protons in the nucleus. Let us remind ourselves of carbon's atomic structure by looking at the Bohr model of the carbon atom. 
The six electrons move around the nucleus, which is at the center. The nucleus is made up of six neutrons and six protons. You will probably recall that electrons are the smallest units of negative charge, and protons have the smallest unit of positive charge. The neutrons, however, are neutral. That is to say, they have neither a positive nor a negative charge. The six protons and the six electrons balance each other out, and that is why the atom is also neutral. Now let's look closely at the Bohr model of the hydrogen atom, which is the simplest and smallest atom of all the elements in the periodic table. The hydrogen atom consists of one proton in the nucleus with an electron moving around it. The negative charge of the electron is equal to the positive charge of the proton. The hydrogen atom is neutral. But the hydrogen atom can become positively charged when its electron is taken away from it, because all that remains is now the proton. The loss or gain of electrons by atoms is the way in which electrical charges are separated, and this is how an electrical current is established. I am now going to show you a demonstration using an electroscope which will illustrate the movement of electrical charge. Remember that an electroscope is an instrument that is able to detect electrical charge. Here is an electroscope. As you can see, it has a round metal cap which is found on the outside of the instrument which is attached to a long metal plate which is found on the inside of the box. Now if you look very carefully you will see a thin piece of gold foil, which I will refer to as the gold leaf. This next graphic shows how an electroscope can become charged. When a negatively charged rod is brought close to the cap, the electrons on the cap are repelled and moved down towards the leaf. The leaf is now negatively charged. The leaf repels from the metal plate and lifts up. Here is a negatively charged electroscope. Can you see that the gold leaf is sticking out sideways? The gold leaf is being repelled from the metal plate, and this shows us that the electroscope is charged. I will now connect a length of insulated copper wire from the cap of the electroscope to the ground. Watch what happens to the gold leaf of the electroscope as I do this. The leaf collapses. The electroscope is losing its charge. Let's look at that demonstration again. Watch closely. Do you see that the gold leaf on the metal plate is sticking out sideways? Why do you think this happens? What can we gather from this fact? I'll give you a hint. Do you remember that like charges repel and unlike charges attract? That means that two things with opposite charges will attract each other. However, two things with the same charge, for example, both negatively charged, will repel or push away from each other. Thus we can gather that the gold leaf, which is sticking out sideways, is being repelled from the metal plate. This means that both the gold leaf and the metal plate must both be negatively charged. Now I'm going to connect a length of insulated copper wire from the cap of the electroscope to the ground. Watch closely what happens to the gold leaf of the electroscope as I do this. Notice that the leaf has collapsed. Why did the leaf collapse? Well, clearly because the electroscope has lost its charge. As a result, what can we learn from our demonstration with the electroscope? Let's have another look. The earthing process involves a transfer of electrons from the charged electroscope through the copper wire to the ground. The charge is conducted or moves through the copper wire. As the electroscope loses its charge, the leaf returns to its naturally collapsed state. Let's summarize our conclusions. Charged objects, such as a charged electroscope, can be discharged by connecting them to the ground through a conductor. This is only possible because charge 
can move. With these conclusions in mind, we have now produced an electric current by allowing charge to move or flow through the copper wire to the ground. Remember what we originally said, that the electric current was a flow of charge. Let us now write down a formal definition of electric current. This is a very important definition, so you must learn it. An electric current is the rate of flow of electric charge. The current depends on the amount of charge that passes a point, as well as the time it takes to move past that point. We will explore this in upcoming lessons. Let us quickly return to our electroscope demonstration and talk a little bit more about the earthing process and the applications it has on our lives. When I discharged the electroscope, only a small current passed through the copper wire to the earth because there was only a small amount of charge stored on the electroscope. In nature, this kind of discharge takes place during electrical storms in the form of lightning. That is why you will often see a tall lightning conductor next to a thatched roof house to conduct the lightning current straight to the ground in order to neutralize it and prevent its electrical energy from setting the thatch on fire. The electrical wiring systems in our houses also have a protective mechanism which allows the electrical energy to pass safely into the ground. This will protect us if the electrical appliance becomes faulty. That's all for now. Please join us next time where we'll actually have a look at what electrical current does. Until then, goodbye. Yeah.